In this tutorial video, I'll be um, showing you how to make, um, how to synthesize cDNA from your RNA. So I have already uploaded uh, step one, which is RNA isolation. And if you want to go see that tutorial video, I'll um, link it down below in the description. So we will do in this video, once again, step two, which is our cDNA synthesis. And after that, we do our step three, which is qPCR, our quantitative PCR. That tutorial video is also um, uploaded, so I'll put the link um, below in the description. Before going ahead and showing you um, how I perform my cDNA synthesis, I like to start by briefly going over the biology of it and how that applies to the technique um, in the lab. So in order to understand why we're isolating this intermediate RNA, then um, doing reverse transcription to make our cDNA um, in order to do our qPCR, we first need to come back and revisit um, our central dogma in biology or central dogma in molecular biology. So if you have taken um, an introductory course in biology or even molecular biology, you have already um, studied a bit on central dogma biology and so what does this mean right and so we learned that in both eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells um, they have that genetic makeup um, in the case of mammalian cells because I'm working with mammalian cells we have DNA and our DNA basically has all our genetic information that makes us that normally in um, based on the central dogma, that DNA is normally transcribed into an intermediate that is short-lived called RNA. And that RNA is then translated into protein. So once again, to recap, our central dogma in biology is DNA is transcribed into RNA and RNA is translated into protein. So, um, these processes are called transcription and translation, and it's important to note that they're very different because DNA and RNA are made out of um, nucleic acids, therefore this is transcription, but protein is made out of amino acids. It's a completely different language, so that's why that is called translation. So keeping that in mind, it's important to know that when we are isolating RNA, first of all, remember RNA is an intermediate, and it's a very delicate intermediate because it's very, um, it's readily uh, destroyed by RNases. Those are enzymes that basically break down RNA. When we isolate RNA, we make use of an enzyme called reverse transcriptase in order to reverse transcribe RNA into cDNA. And once we have our cDNA, then we can proceed and do our qPCR. I'm not going to go into much more details. I just wanted to do this very brief introduction. But if you guys want to know more about central dogma and the different processes of transcription and translation, do let me know in the comments. For cDNA synthesis, these are the components that I use. For dilution, I'm going to be using the ambient nuclease free water. So remember, we want to make sure that there are no nucleases um, in any of our components because we're working with RNA and RNA is easily degradable by um, nucleases. Um, in addition, we make use of the Apply Biosystems Kit. So this is by Thermo Fisher, um, the high capacity cDNA reverse transcription kit. And here is the uh, reference number if you wanna order it. And so this kit comes with four different components. And I like that they're color coded so you know what you're using and you wanna make sure that you have these in eyes. So in blue, we have our DNTP mix. In yellow, we have our 10X RT buffer. In white, we have our 10X RT random primers. 
there we go and then what makes this reaction possible is our enzyme here so we have the let me flip it this way multi-scribe reverse um, transcriptase the first thing i'm going to do before i start my cdna synthesis is to measure the concentration of my rna so as you can see here i have my diluted rna and my um, blank sample ready to go um, for in my case i use 10 millimolar tris um, hydrochloride to dilute my RNA, I do a one to 10 dilution, but you are more than welcome to use your uh, water. That's really up to you and what your lab does. So after I dilute my samples and the way how I do it is I put two microliters of my concentrated RNA into 18 microliters of my diluent, the 10 millimolar tris hydrochloride. And then I make sure that I spin them down, I mix them up and down, and for measuring the RNA concentration in our lab, we make use of the Biotech Citation 5. So if you have this machine, um, I'll show you how to load it. The nice thing about uh, our machine is that we have the Take 3 Trio, and as you can see, you load your samples in doublets, and there are enough to load um, 24 different samples, or in my case, uh, the first two, I load my blank, and then there is space for 23 more samples. To read our RNA samples, we are going to use a Gen 5 3.10 software. So this is the software initiating. So if you want to see if you want to see how to load, I have my pipette ready to go um, for two microliters. Get my tip, go to my sample, make sure you mix it up and down get your two microliters as you can see there and then load onto your well Once you are done loading, you gently seal the plate like this, making sure that you don't splash your samples. When loading your plate onto the Biotech Citation 5, make sure that the orientation of your plate is correct. So see where you have the letters A through H that is facing inward or away from you. Once the software is open, go on to read now. It opens into this um, page where it has a lot of the protocols that we have built in our lab. For this case, you're going to use where it says take three application and you're gonna go into nucleic acid quantification. You're going to click and so see how it depicts the image of the plate once the samples have been loaded onto the plate, you're going to come here onto the software and note that where it says well type, you have options to click empty, blank, or sample. In my case, uh, the first two samples that I loaded are my blank, so those um, are under the blank. And for the samples, I go ahead here, uh, pick samples, two replicates per sample, and so make a rectangle and pull down to load your samples or to tell the software uh, your number of samples. Even though some of these last wells were empty, in order for the software to go ahead and read your samples, you still need to complete the entire rectangle. Just keep in mind where you stop loading your samples. Once you have this ready, go ahead and click read. 
once you click read is going to ask you or there's this message saying load plate place the plate on the carrier press ok when ready you press ok once you do that the plate automatically goes in and you don't have to touch that here is a close-up of what I was showing you where it says well type you click down here empty blank and sample and where it says replicates over here you have what you're going to press in order to read your plate when you're ready to read them and up here are the details of the program right wavelength 260 peak 280 ratio 320 reference uh, what well type you're using micro spots sample type RNA in our case When the plate is reading or the Flightation 5 is reading your um, RNA samples, it'll show a little window like this where it says read in progress and you can hear the machine. Once your run is done, you are going to go ahead and click approve. And it's nice because it exports your results into Excel. As you can see here, it shows you blank values and then the values of your samples. Once you are done, you go ahead and say end of batch. And now you have all your values, your raw data here. Uh, as you can see, it gives you concentration nanograms per microliter your mean of the two replicates and then you can go ahead and multiply your results by your dilution factor. In my case it was a dilution factor of 10 and I'll show you that in a second. After we measure our RNA, um, the concentration of our RNA, we have to do a calculation and know how much RNA or nanograms of RNA we want that we are going to then synthesize into cDNA. Uh, before doing that, if this is your first time doing qPCR isolating RNA, I really recommend downloading the RNEC mini handbook. It has a lot of good information including how to troubleshoot and one of the important things here is talking about the purity of RNA when you're looking at your a to 60, A to 80 ratio, and it tells you where you want to be within that range. Obviously, diluting it in the 10 millimolar tris chloride solution, which is what I use to dilute my samples. So, I already went ahead and ran my um, samples. So, these are the results sample results, sample read, well ID, name. You can also, on the machine, on the software, write your own name. I know what my samples are, so I didn't. Location, uh, the 260 raw values, 280. And then what's really important is your uh, 260 to 80 ratio, where it should be 1.922. Um, so this looks really good, and I put a little note there. And the mean of my replicates, once I am done with that, what I do is that I go ahead and make sure that I label all my samples. I had 12 samples. I keep location. The nanogram per microliter that the um, software told me the mean. And then remember, I diluted my samples by a factor of 10. So I make sure that I multiply that mean value by 10, gives me these results. And then I always like um, calculating how much nanograms I'm getting of RNA in my 33 microliters. So I have here the total. I get plenty of sample. And here it's doing the actual calculations for my cDNA. In my case, I'm going to only use 500 nanograms of my RNA to make 500 nanograms of cDNA. And note that we dilute this into 25 microliters of water. I know I put RNA water here, but this is your nuclease-free water. So what I end up doing here is I go ahead and divide 500 by my um, concentration, and that will give you how many microliters of your samples to load. Once you have that, I go ahead and 
to 25 microliters of my sample, I remove um, however much RNA I'm going to use. So I have my formula here and I do that for all my samples. Once I know um, how much of my RNA I need to make cDNA and how much of the water, I will then do the calculations for loading my tubes in order to reverse transcribe the RNA into cDNA. And so note that I have here my RT, my reverse transcription master mix, the um, RT buffer in yellow, the DNTP in blue, the random primers in Y, the reverse transcriptase in purple, your nucleus free water, and your total volume. So note that we're doing a total volume of 25. These are the uh, volumes that we're using per reagent. And then even though I am working with 12 reactions, I always like adding an extra or two just so you don't run out of your samples. So that's why I have here number of reactions 13. And then I multiply these volumes by 13 reactions. So now I know um, how much volume I need to make this total uh, master mix reaction. Once I'm ready, I'm going to load into the individual tubes my 25 microliters of my RNA, 500 nanograms RNA, and my 25 microliters of my RT master mix. Then we're going to go ahead, put that in the thermal cycler, and let it run. While my RNA concentration samples are running, I go ahead and set up my components that I'll be using to run my cDNA synthesis. I have them all out thawing so I can be, uh, I can use them. And the one thing I don't pull out out of the minus 20 is the reverse transcriptase enzyme. I leave that till the end. So I have my tubes already labeled that where I'm going to add my RNA in order to make cDNA. So if you like this strip of tubes that have already a cap, um, I use the VWR, um, that's the catalog number. These are the PCR strip with attached optical clear cap and they hold up to 200 microliters, uh, which is fine. I'm only going to be running 50. And they come in a bag like this, as you can see them. They're in a little strip, um, and the caps are attached to them. So I like them just because they're all in a, in a group, and I don't have to be concerned that I might lose an individual tube. To run my cDNA synthesis, I'll be making use of the mini amp thermal cycler, and I'll show you in a second how I do the setup, load my tubes, and start my reaction. So after my calculations, the first thing that I am going to do is to make my master mix. So I have my tube labeled master mix. I already added my nucleus free uh, water. I also added my um, RT buffer and now I'm going to add my random primers. And in my case, I need 65 microliters of this. Have my 65 microliters. close this, keep it in ice, and then I put it into the tube where I'm mixing all my components. Mix it up and down a couple times so you can see here the components. Okay. And now I'm going to add 26 microliters of my DNTP mix. 26 microliters. And I'm going to first get all my RNA here with the water to make 25 microliters. And once I am done with these, 
I'm going to add my reverse transcriptase to my master mix, mix it well, and then add the 25 microliters to each um, tube of the master mix. Many microliters to my first tube. And right now I'm adding the nuclease free water. And then I'll add my RNA to make a total of 25 microliters. So now that I finished adding my nuclease free water, I'm going to start adding my RNA. So once again, I am adding enough volume of my RNA to make 500 nanograms of RNA. That's my final concentration, and that will be synthesized into 500 nanograms of cDNA. So for my first sample, my control, I'm using 5 microliters. So that's my RNA. You want to make sure you keep it in eyes. Um, I already have the appropriate volume mix up and down gently a couple of times make sure you have uh, your volume and then mix gently into the water so once i'm done with this go ahead and put it here and then close that tube i will be adding my master mix to these tubes as well so for my next sample uh, number two, I'm also using five microliters. So once again, so you can see, I pipette it gently up and down and then mix it into my little tubes up and down. This is done. Close this. So I'll go ahead and finish the rest of these. So I'm finishing up loading my RNA sample into the water. What I'm going to do next is put all my other um, RNA that I'm not going to be using for future experiments in the minus 20 and go ahead and get the reverse transcriptase that I'm going to add it into my master mix so then I can I'll equate the 25 microliters into my sample. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I put my samples away and all the materials that I'm not using to make sure that they stay cold. And the last step is adding my reverse transcriptase onto my master mix. And once again, um, I have all my calculations ready to go. So I know exactly how much I'm going to load, get my sample, there we go, add it to my master mix, okay, put this in ice, I'll give the mixture a quick spin as well as quickly spin my 25 microliters of sample, RNA sample. To spin our, our small tubes, we have these adapters. I'm going to use this one right here. So really easy, just goes on there and you'll hear it click. To remove it, just push inward and you pull out once again. So I'll put my samples here so they can balance themselves and just give it a quick spin. Only a few seconds and you can actually check that your samples are all spun down. The volume's the same. Check my second sample. Same. For my master mix, I'm going to change this again. 
use this adapter. And I have my master mix, which just gently mix. I don't want to vortex this. And then have an equal balance. Give it a couple seconds just to pull everything down. And it's ready. Put it back in ice and now I'll start the loading the master mix onto my sample my RNA sample okay so I went ahead and put my RNA transcriptase enzyme in the minus 20 now that I'm ready to go my mixture is ready I have my VVR uh, this is a multi pipetter so I already set it up where it's going to dispense 25 microliters six times you guys can see that and so I'm gonna go ahead open my first samples one through six okay get my master mix in a little bit takes an aliqua and then this takes extra volume to just dispense that extra bit and now one two, three, four, five, six. Now note that some of that volume can still be on the side of your little tubes. It's okay. We're actually going to spin this down one more time and gently um, vortex them. So there's some, there's some on the edge right there, but we're about to like spin them down. So we're going to do the second set. Once again, get our aliquot of Master Mix. Dispense the extra and load. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Perfect. I'm gonna spin these. I went ahead and quickly um, spun these little tubes down. If you want to make sure that everything's mixed, just gently tickle your tubes to make sure that everything's mixed together. You could vortex it, but make sure that you use it at a very low um, speed. You don't want to be too aggressive with your RNA. I prefer to just do this method also, if you want to invert them, make sure they're well sealed and you can invert them. Put them back here and spin for three, five seconds. Perfect. Check that the volume it's all at the bottom of the tubes. That is great. Great. So now we're going to load into our thermocycler. My thermocycler is ready to go. I will go ahead and put my samples in here. You can see where I'm putting the tubes here into these little wells. Once that's ready, close the lid and then come on to setup run, open method. We already have a method to synthesize our cDNA. I click on that. It tells me the different stages and steps and total volume 50 microliters so usually this would be set up or um, you'll have to set it up the first time you're running it once everything's good ready to go just press next it gives you an ID for your run and if everything looks good go ahead and press um, start run and there we go it'll do preheating and it tells you how long um, DNA synthesis this process is going to take and that's it